Hi, my name is Roland and welcome back to the Suzuki SC100 Revival series. In this part, part number 5 already, we will be refurbishing the brakes and also install them. I will be patching rusty holes and also be protecting the welds. I'll create gutter strip retainers and I will also be replacing the tie rod ends. Let's start from the very beginning where I refurbished my brake calipers. I got some new rubbers and some new o-rings and some used pistons but in way better condition. And the first thing that I did was clean them all up and then apply a generous coating of silicon spray before assembling the caliper itself. I then smothered the seals in silicon grease that I got with the seals themselves. After carefully placing them in the corresponding grooves, it's now time to grease up the piston itself and then apply the dust cover. And the trick is to get the dust cover in the caliper and then try to jiggle it around so the dust cover doesn't pop out of the caliper but the piston does go into the caliper and this was quite a struggle so I didn't end up filming all of it since I could use all the light it was already dark but eventually I got it all in. The pistons are now very free to move, very easy to move so I went to install them the following day in fact, they moved so freely that one or the other side kept popping out. But with some compressed air, I was able to fix the issue and continue installing the calipers. Also, I used copious amount of grease on the guide pins to make sure that nothing locks up in the future. And I also greased around the caliper and the um, brake pad contact area. I also did the same on the other side and now I have a perfectly working braking system. Whilst we are at the front axle, let's get back to the tie rod ends, which I had a very hard time with in the previous episodes. I now have two refurbished tie rod ends, however the threads aren't quite alright, so I uh, fixed them up with a tapper and then the threads were good enough to be used again, like I'm showing you right here. I also added a small slit to the thread itself so I can jam a screwdriver in there to make sure that it doesn't turn whilst I'm putting a screw back on. Since I couldn't find the correct uh, castle nut, I will be using a nylon nut instead. Installing the tie rod end on the left side of the car was extremely easy because the threads were still intact and also because of the trick with the slit in the end of the tie rod end, it really helped preventing the, uh, well, the end itself from turning within its socket. Installing the tie rod ends on the right side however is an entirely different story as the threads are ruined. So for that I bought a tap and die set for an M12 by one and a quarter thread size or thread pitch and then I started tapping. It came with two taps, one uh, for the initial tap and then two or the second one for the final tap that creates the extra threads 
And once I was done with the two steps, it worked perfectly. But me, I of course first used the first tap and then tried to get the Tyrant End in, but it wouldn't work, so then I tapped it again. So after learning that the two steps in this tapping process are actually necessary, the tie rod end went in without any problem and then again the slit was very useful for installing the nylon lock nut. And then came a pretty satisfying moment for me, as the wheels on the front axle have been off for so long I could now finally reinstall them. A very different problem is that the strips kept coming loose on the car and of course at highway speeds you wouldn't want one to rip off. So I created these little, little things. It's a simple piece of metal that's bent and then I slid it in between right there which prevented this uh, strip from flying off in the future. And whilst I was working on this strip, I figured that I could also recalk some of the, well, old caulk where rust was starting to get behind to make sure it doesn't rust any further in the future. And the rust really wasn't that bad just yet, it was mainly staining on the white car. With the tiny rust now fixed on most of the car, it is time to focus on the big rust like this hole. At the same time I also started working on the other side which was way better. The first thing that I had to do was grind off all the loose bits to make sure that I know the actual size of this hole. Then I cleaned out all the loose bits out of this hole with some compressed air. And that left me with this result. And it's now time to create the first cuts. Luckily I always have some small cutting discs, actually very much used cutting discs laying around, which is especially helpful when you try to reach into these little places where you need to make small cuts. I could then clean the inside a bit more with a file and a wire wheel brush. Now before closing up the hole I applied some rust converter and also some protectant grease, uh, wax if you will, while my supervisor was watching. All of this work resulted in my medium sized hole now being a very large hole. And yes, that is what she said. Using some cardboard aided design, I could now trace the cardboard onto a piece of metal, cut it out and then, of course, start welding it in. But to make this piece of metal fit in the hole, I will first need to add some shape to this flat piece of metal. And now it fits perfectly. And then after some pristine welding, this is what I ended up with. Before going any further, it was time to create another little part. And of course weld that in as well. And finally add some paint. Of course you also want to repeat this process for any other holes that you have in the car. After you have welded all of these holes and also added a primer layer or a chassis paint, for which I use a cramp synthetic paint, it is time to add some caulk. Again, it doesn't need to be very thick, it just needs to be on there. And after this step it even looks pretty. 
And whilst you're there, it's a good idea to also recalk any old cracking or dry seams. Before I go to the next step, which is adding some black anti-stone chip paint, it's a wise idea to clean these wheel wells very well. You can see that this was definitely a necessary step. Adding this stone chip protection makes everything nice and black and is very satisfying to see. With this being the final result after spraying but before fully curing. And now it's time to show the before and after. If you had a very keen eye, you know that a small piece of the internal structure wasn't recreated. This is bad, but you can also see that the sail has a prior repair that could use a new repair. And when I have that hole, I can easily create that tiny piece of internal structure. Thank you very much for watching part 5 of the SC100 revival series. Please do subscribe and leave a comment, I love reading the comments. And in part 6 I will be replacing the coolant system, all of the coolant lines that run across the entire length of the car. So make sure you tune in next time.